Hi, it's Matt here from Go Green Autos. So this is a Nissan ENV 200 electric van, 24 kilowatt hour version, 2015. And this is a, uh, an ex British gas van. You can always tell these by the blue color. And these are fitted with a auxiliary Weber Stowe diesel heater at the front to give you that additional heating in the winter. And in this video, I'm going to show you that heater show you what it does and with a thermometer attempt to see how different that diesel heater is compared to the inbuilt electric heater. So as part of the British gas standard fit out of these vans they fit these Weberstow diesel heaters and this is the control for it on the dash here and that's a heater up front which I'll show you in a minute but the whole point of those is you have got that second source of heat which means you don't have to use the factory electric heater, which gives you maximum range in the winter, because obviously with all EVs, using that heater uses huge amounts of energy, and that's why you see less range. But with these, you can retain full range if you're willing to burn a bit of diesel and use the auxiliary heater. So let's uh, open the bonnet with the right lever, and then shut that back down. So under the bonnet here, we've got this heater fitted and it's a Weberstow Airtop 2000 ST. And what it consists of is a heater unit here. These are the two air vents, which are sort of insulated with these jackets on. And one goes off that way to the driver's footwell and one goes off this way into the passenger's footwell. You've got your power feeds coming off the 12 volt battery. There's your main fuse for the unit and it sucks in air from underneath and I don't know whether you can see there that um, corrugated pipe. Let me just see if I can get the camera on there. No, it's hidden by this. But anyway, your exhaust pipe goes down there to the ground. And then in the back here is the diesel tank. I think it's a 10 litre tank mounted on the side panel. So obviously you fill it there You've got a return feed, well, turn line coming into the top. This is your feed line. The fuel pipes going to the heater at the front are really small. Uh, they've got a one or one and a half millimeter inside diameter with a four or five millimeter outside diameter. This one's also got uh, this pipe on the side that you can see the level of your diesel because it's a black tank, so it's very difficult to judge. Uh, but I've got a bit of masking tape here. What I'm gonna do, is put that on the level and then when we run the heater we can see how much diesel is being used. So with my thermometer here I can see the outside temperature at the moment looks like it is 10 degrees. So what I'm going to do is switch on the van, leave the factory heating off for now but put the diesel heater on I'll put it to maximum temperature and then we'll just leave this running for a few minutes to um, see what sort of temperature we get. So when you turn this on initially, it doesn't really do much. It does take quite a while for this to get up to full operating temperature and for the fans to start, there is quite a delay. And again, when you turn it off, it runs for quite a long time. Um, so you don't get instant heat, but we'll see that starting to work in a minute. And then I'll show you where the air comes in if I just switch on my torch here. Looking up on the driver's side behind the steering column, you can see that round air vent there. We actually need to turn that probably so it's blowing down. But that's blowing air right on your toes. And then on the passenger side, a bit hidden here with this carpet, that needs sorting out. But anyway, we've got the same vent there blowing air into the passenger's footwell. So I would imagine the performance of this is very much going to be dictated by the current air temperature outside because of the air that this is sucking in is really cold. It's got to do obviously more work. Um, and you can hear that it is making quite a lot of noise, but obviously it's outside the vehicle under the engine bay. So when that bonnet shut, it's uh, not too bad at all. So this has been running for about three minutes now. So it should be up to sort of temperature. 
certainly feels it so what I'm going to do is just hold the thermometer there to see what the temperature is of this air blowing into the cabin and as you can see it's already shooting up very quick it's up to 30 degrees already so I'll just hold it there for a while and see what temperature that air is yeah it seems to have stopped rising now we're up to 38 now it's still going up so it is very toasty air coming into the cabin yeah it's still rising Wow, well, that is warm. It's, it's obviously performing considerably better than the heat we're going to get out of the factory electric heater. Right, well my thermometer's got up to 50 degrees C. It will probably keep rising more. It is nice and warm. It's about the same as what you'd get from a hairdryer or something like that. Actually, that's quite hot. Yeah. Um, that's almost like we get from a hot air gun to be honest I couldn't put my fingers any more than about three or four inches away from that vent that is very warm so yeah it's considerably hotter than 50 degrees obviously we've got this on the hottest temperature and it is adjustable but for this test uh, it's best just to run it on maximum so we can see the difference between that and the standard heater so I've still left the uh, Weber Stow heater running so what we're going to do now is turn on the factory heating put this to maximum we've got it on heat I'll leave the fan at about uh, halfway and we'll change the mode so it is coming through the air vents as that is easier for me to hold the thermometer against and measure it so I'll just leave this one running for a couple of minutes to get up to maximum temperature. The onboard factory heater of course is drawing in air from here which then goes through the cabin filter which is behind the glove box here and then goes through a, uh, a PTC heater which I think is mounted behind the back of this uh, dashboard here but this has now been running for um, three or four minutes so let's see what temperature we're getting so uh, just before I put that on there uh, this is measuring 16 degrees so let's see what temperature that air is coming out that air vent certainly not as hot as the diesel heater but then you know you wouldn't expect it uh, just for reference I've got the fan at about 50% On the diesel heater you have no control on the fan speed as such you've just got that dial which changes your temperature whether that adjusts the fan speed I'm not really sure so the thermometer's gone up to 40 what's that 42 43 degrees doesn't seem to be rising anymore um, so yeah pretty good we're getting some decent heat out of this um, the PTC heaters on these on the Nissans do uh, get a bit unreliable as they age and are very very expensive to change um, so uh, yeah if you've got one of these vans with the Weber Stow heating at least you've got that back up and if that factory heating fails you don't need to go to the effort of replacing it in fact actually I think it's cheaper to buy a whole new Weber Stow, uh diesel kit and you can also buy um, cheaper Chinese uh, replicas of the same it would be cheaper to fit all of that rather than replacing the factory PTC heater if that fails so the Weber Stow heater has been running for about seven minutes now and if we look at the oil level that has dropped only one millimeter maybe one and a half so yeah very efficient I'm not sure how long this tank this 10 litres of diesel will actually last in the winter but I would imagine you're not filling that up very often but of course you would only use the diesel heating when you really need to if you're not worried about range and you've got enough range for what you're doing then you're going to use the factory heating because you don't want to be producing emissions in an EV unless you really have to so there you go um, obviously the 
diesel heater is a lot more efficient, produces a lot more heat, but of course you're producing emissions, which ideally you don't want to do. But if you've got a small battery EV, it's a great way of making that vehicle a lot more useful in the winter and you're not seeing that sort of range loss. So if I turn that off, yeah, we're losing at about, it's an estimate of course, but we're losing about 20 miles of range by running the factory heater, where of course we'll be using zero range by running the auxiliary heater. So I hope you found that useful. If you have, please do click the thumbs up button on YouTube because that really does help. Also comment and uh, subscribe if you haven't and new e-videos on the channel every week. I'm running this diesel heater again and I just want to correct an error in the way this is working because I thought it was sucking air up from underneath and then blowing it out into both footwells. I was wrong. It's actually sucking air from the passenger footwell through the heater and then blowing it in to the driver's footwell. There isn't actually an air intake underneath. I'd looked at a picture of this on a parts diagram and it looked like there was an air intake but running this again and actually putting my hand down in the passenger footwell I suddenly realised there's no heat here and actually it is sucking up this side and only blowing air out that side.